Juan Daniel's Football Frog, a bioengineering story. Chapter One, Game Day. Juan Daniel tossed a water bottle into his duffel bag and scanned the rest of its contents. Gonzalez t-shirt, check. Towel, check. He was ready to go. Juan Daniel threw the bag over his shoulder and ran through the kitchen toward the front door of their house. Friends and neighbors were sitting at the small tables eating Mama Therese's delicious food. Mama Therese's pupuseria was always busy on weekend afternoons. Just as Juan Daniel stepped outside into the hot Salvadoran sunlight, ready to sprint to the field, a voice called to him. Juan Daniel, not even a kiss for your grandmother? It was Mama Tere. Juan Daniel skidded to a stop, ran back inside and placed a kiss on her cheek. I'll be home after the game, he called already out the door. Buena suerte, Mama Tere called. She shook her head and smiled before turning back to her customers. Chapter two, Benched. As Juan Daniel tore down the dusty road, he looked toward the thick trees in the distance. Although Juan Daniel's town was located on the edge of El Imposible, a rainforest reserve in El Salvador, he knew from experience that El Campo de Futbol, the soccer field, would be hot and dry. There were no trees to block the beating sun, and since it was the middle of the dry season, it hadn't rained for months. Hola, Carlos, Juan Daniel yelled to his best friend. Carlos waved to him and gave the ball a fierce kick halfway across the field. Juan Daniel jogged out to him and started warming up. Hey, nice shirt, is it new? Carlos teased. Juan Daniel wore this t-shirt to every soccer game. He'd gotten it when he had visited the capital, San Salvador, two years ago. While he was there, he had seen his soccer idol, Jorge El Magico Gonzalez number 11 on the national team in a parade. This t-shirt was a replica of El Magico's soccer jersey. Are you ready for the big game? Carlos asked. More than ready, Juan Daniel said. Juan Daniel and his friends had been playing soccer against other boys from their town every weekend for almost a month. There were two games left to determine the neighborhood champion. Juan Daniel knew his team could win. They just had to focus. You guys ready? called Jose Eduardo, the captain of the other team. Juan Daniel looked up at him and nodded. Jose Eduardo towered over all the other boys on the field. He may have size, thought Juan Daniel, but I have speed. From the game's start, Juan Daniel proved himself right by quickly running up the field to score the first goal. The teams lined up for the kickoff and play started again. Juan Daniel got control of the ball and sprinted up the field. He saw the goalie hungering down, getting ready to block his shot. Juan Daniel brought his foot back. Just as he was about to connect with the ball, he felt a hard push against his shoulder. It was Jose Eduardo. Juan Daniel hit the ground. Carlos jogged over and knelt down by Juan Daniel. Hey, he's just a bully. Forget about him, Carlos said. Juan Daniel wiped the dust off his eyes and moved to hoist himself up. Ah, Juan Daniel cried out as he leaned on his arm. He crumpled. My arm, he gasped. More of Juan Daniel's teammates ran over as they saw him hit the ground again. Faker, we know you're just playing, called one of Jose Eduardo's teammates. What are we going to do? asks Carlos. I can play, I swear said Juan Daniel. I just fell on it hard. It won't even bother me. No, Juan Daniel. Javier, the team's forward, broke in. This is a really important game, but we need you to be able to play the next game, too. What if you hurt your arm even more by swinging it as you run? You should at least rest for a little bit. Juan Daniel saw ten faces nodding in agreement. With his good arm, Juan Daniel pushed himself up and headed toward the bench. Chapter three, a football frog. Juan Daniel sat out the rest of the first half. His teammates were holding their own, but it was a close game. 
As he stared out onto the field, something popped into view. It was a frog. Juan Daniel watched it hop around the edge of the field. He scooped up the frog and looked into its bright gold eyes, running a finger along the frog's green and brown patterned skin. Running a finger along the frog's green and brown patterned skin, Juan Daniel paused. Hey, it seems like there's something wrong with you, he said. The frog's skin was dry like paper, nothing at all like the moist skin of frogs he'd found in the rainforest. What's that? asked Carlos after slugging down the, a mouthful from his water bottle. Juan Daniel jumped in surprise. He had been so interested in the frog that he hadn't noticed that Carlos had taken a water break. I found this frog on the edge of the field, Juan Daniel said. Don't you think it's strange that he's out here? Usually I find frogs in El Imposible, hanging out under the rainforest plants and logs where it's wet and cool. This frog is out here in the blazing sun. The other day, my papa was talking about an article he read in the newspaper, Carlos said, still catching his breath. With so much of the rainforest being cut down, a lot of animal habitats are being lost. The animals have nowhere to go and sometimes end up in the wrong place. Carlos looked down at Juan Daniel's arm. How are you feeling? My arm feels a lot better, Juan Daniel said, and it did feel much better, but Carlos gave Juan Daniel a look of disbelief before he jogged back onto the field. Looks like we've got something in common, Juan Daniel said to the frog. We're both in the wrong place here on the sideline. Juan Daniel grabbed his water bottle and carefully sprinkled water on the frog. Maybe that'll make you more comfortable until the end of the game, he said. As the frog settled into the shade of Juan Daniel's shadow, Juan Daniel watched his teammates. With just a few minutes left, Juan Daniel knew his team would need some moves to get a goal. Juan Daniel noticed his teammate, Ernesto, looked tired. Just then, Ernesto jogged toward the bench and reached for his water bottle. Juan Daniel began talking a mile a minute. Ernesto, you've got to let me in for the last minute. I know I can do this. My arm's feeling a lot better, and all I have to do is sprint down the field and get one good kicking. Ernesto was huffing and puffing, taking sips of water between breaths. Does your arm really feel better? He asked. It really does, I promise, Juan Daniel pleaded. Okay, Ernesto said slowly, go get him. A huge grin spread across Juan Daniel's face. He tightened his shoelaces and reached for his water bottle to take a drink. Sitting right next to it, as if waiting to wish him luck, was the frog. Watch this, Juan Daniel said to the frog as he ran to get into position. Juan Daniel took off toward midfield with adrenaline racing through his veins. With adrenaline racing through his veins, he barely felt a thing as he pumped his arms while he ran. He glanced back over his shoulder and saw Carlos kick the ball through the air in a high arc. As soon as it landed in front of him, Juan Daniel began dribbling the ball down the field. Nearing the goal, Juan Daniel, nearing the goal, Juan Daniel glanced to the, nearing the goal, Juan Daniel glanced to each side for defenders, then booted the ball hard toward the goal. It seemed to move in slow motion as it sailed through the goalposts. Woohoo! yelled Carlos, giving Juan Daniel a congratulatory slap on the back. All of his teammates soon crowded around. That was awesome, said Mario. How'd you manage to come back so strong after that fall? Juan Daniel shrugged. I don't know. I just knew I could do it. Plus, I had a little luck from that frog, he said, pointing to the frog still sitting near his water bottle. A frog, asked Mario. A frog, asked Mario. Yeah, a frog, but not just any frog, a lucky frog. And our new team mascot, said Juan Daniel. I think everyone, including the frog, should head back to my grandmother's pupuseria. We need some victory food. Chapter four. Later that day, after the celebratory dinner with his team, Juan Daniel helped Mama Teray serve plates of steaming pupusas. On a table in the corner, the frog looked on from a large bowl that Juan Daniel had placed him in. Juan Daniel, Mama Teray called, can you help those people who just came in? I wonder what they're doing here, Juan Daniel thought. It wasn't often that outsiders stopped in Juan Daniel's town. They usually just passed through on their way to the rainforest. 
There was a blonde woman with an accent and a Salvadoran man and a woman, both in business suits. Juan Daniel walked over to take their order. I think that one, I think that, I think that with one more trip into the rainforest, we'll have the data we need to go back to the lab, said the Salvadoran man. Well, that's only if the frogs don't hide themselves away in a bunch of leaves, added the blonde woman. Frogs? Juan Daniel cried out before he even realized he'd opened his mouth. I found a frog today. Juan Daniel pointed toward the corner table where he had left the frog. It looks like frogs are everywhere. You least expect them, laughed the blonde woman as she, as she stuck out her hand. Hi, I'm Kristen Peters. My colleagues and I have been studying frogs in El... My colleagues and I have been studying frogs in El Imposible. Juan Daniel introduced himself and shook her hand. Where did you find the frog? She asked. Juan Daniel explained to Miss Peters about the dusty soccer field and how the frog had been his team's lucky mascot. I'm glad he brought you good luck, Miss Peters said. These frogs are having an awfully hard time with so much of the rainforest being cut down, but it looks like you're taking pretty good care of him. Just make sure to keep him moist. Frogs need moist skin so they can absorb air into their bodies. I poured some water on him at the game, Juan Daniel said, but hopefully I'll play but hopefully I'll play in all of the next game, so I won't be around to pour water on him. I'll have to think of a better way to keep him moist. Juan Daniel felt a hand on his shoulder and turned to see Mama Therese smiling and shaking her head. Juan Daniel, I think these people stopped by for food, not to have you talk their ears off. It's okay, said Miss Peters. He was just telling me about his frog. Juan Daniel, if you have a few minutes, you might be interested to hear about some of the work that I do. I bet it would help you come up with a way to help your frog. Juan Daniel looked hopefully at Mama Tere. Well, I can't have that frog sitting in the pupuseria forever, can I? Mama Tere asked. Go ahead and sit and figure out what to do with it. Juan Daniel grinned and pulled up a chair. Miss Peters explained that she traveled into the forest in search of amphibians, such as frogs, so she could study the special properties of their skin. Frog skin is pretty neat, Miss Peters said. Frog skin and people skin is a membrane. Membranes protect us like a shield, keeping harmful things out of our bodies. But they also let some things pass through, like water and oxygen. That's how frogs drink. They absorb water through their skin. Some frogs have skin with what we call antimicrobial properties. Their skin can fight bacteria. Their skin can fight bacteria and viruses. Can you imagine if people could come up with some sort of a coating like that for our skin? It could stop people from getting sick or even help us come up with new medicines or vaccines. Juan Daniel nodded. That's cool. So are you a scientist? Miss Peters shook her head no. The two people I'm with are scientists. It's really important to work closely with scientists in my job, though. I'm a bioengineer. I use what I know about math and science, especially biology or things found in nature, to solve problems that living things might have, like people or your frog. I guess figuring out how to keep my frog skin moist during the game is an engineering problem, said Juan Daniel. It sure is, said Miss Peters. How were you thinking of solving it? I haven't thought too much about it yet, said Juan Daniel. I have an idea that might get you started, said Miss Peters. You could try taking a walk outside. Sometimes nature has already solved a problem in a unique way. When bioengineers look at how nature works, we can get some great information that helps us create technologies, things or processes that help us solve problems. So I could create a technology that helps solve my problem, said Juan Daniel. That's a great idea. I think I'll take a trip to the rainforest. By now, the two Salvadorans were done with their pupusas. As they slid their chairs back from the table, Juan Daniel stood to say goodbye. I tell you what, said Ms. Peters. I'll be back here in a few days. Maybe I can stop by to see how your solution is coming along. As Ms. Peters and her co-workers walked out the door, Juan Daniel sat back down at the table. Who knew that there were engineers out there studying and trying to design something like frog skin, he thought. And who knew they traveled to places like my little town in El Salvador?